And I'm going to tell you how I how how it works eventually, but also what I was doing before it that got me thinking about this. And a theme that you'll see throughout is that I, the only thing I know how to do is do stupid things lots of times. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, people talk about data analysis, and I don't really know what it means, but it seems to involve people and CSV files. And maybe you have a lot of CSV files, and you look at all these CSV files and try to learn something cool. And maybe you have like CSV files from your company, but you might also have CSV files from like the government or someone else, um, who could be in the middle as well. Um, and then you have you know you have a bunch of CSV files and kind of them all together, maybe ten of them, and you come up with something cool. And then maybe you have a oops, what happened? Um, maybe you have a few people working on it. Uh, so you have like even more CSV files. And you know I've done a lot of this um, in my life. So maybe I've looked at like that many CSV files, but that's still not very many CSV files because like we have more like maybe like that many CSV files on the internet, and like that's more than this. And I'm not going to get to this many. Like even if I try, they're just too many. But I want to know what was in all of them. So I started trying to figure out what was in all of them, uh, and basically by looking at all of them. But I couldn't look at all of them, so I came up with some stupid thing that I could get a computer to do, and had a computer look at all of them. So I started doing like uh, go to a bunch of open data sites, and I don't really know what I mean by open data site, but really it's I went to a bunch of sites that were in the same software that had a, an easy way for me to download CSV files and metadata about the CSV files, and I was able to determine well how many times data sets were downloaded from all these different websites. The, the websites listed on the the y-axis, and those are governments mostly, and then the axis is number of data set downloads and. I don't really know what to conclude from this, except that you know data sets got downloaded. And another thing was uh, that people seemed to like that I tweeted about it, that people people seemed to like was um, I looked at data sets being dead links. Um, some of these sites you or on these sites you can reference CSV files that are on other websites, and if that happens, it's possible that the link will go down. So here the x-axis is the proportion of the data sets that are external links, and the y-axis is um, the proportion of data sets that are Working that are valid, links. and it looked like software had some impact on this or some relationship to this. But you know, that's just another interesting thing. It's not really getting yet to what some of these CSV files, but you can see the pattern here of I'm doing silly things lots of times with all the spreadsheets. And uh, yeah, another thing that people seem to like that uh, is a little bit off this topic, but is I found this um, crisis for Socrata, which is one of the open data catalog of softwares that people use a lot. Um, and then I realized. Working through this price list and all the features in each of the products they offer, I could figure out what products all the different people had purchased. Um, basically, the different levels of service give you a different amount of data sets that you can store and a different amount of APIs. I don't really know what that means. But I was able to determine how many data sets um, people had and sort of get some guess as to like, it looks like because data.ny.gov has a lot of APIs, they're probably in the enterprise plan. And data.medicare.gov at the bottom left might just be on the basic plan. This doesn't have anything to do with And this isn't really about what's in the spreadsheets, but it tells you something about how they're organizing their data and how many they have. And the, the whole point is, like I was doing these things that are silly statistics applied lots of times to all the data sets and trying to get some big idea of what's in them. And the scary thing was that um, people, uh, people were really interested in all this stuff. And apparently, I was teaching people something. Uh, like I didn't know this stuff, but apparently, other people didn't know it either. Um, and I started realizing that nobody actually has any idea what's in their data. Like maybe there's one person in the organization who is managing the whole thing, who maybe has some idea what's in all of them. But but it's just one guy, and it's only because he's like talked to every individual person who's had some mistake in any of these data sets. Um, so I started thinking, if nobody has any idea what's in them, maybe I can try to figure out what's in them. And, more importantly, help people figure out what's in them. Um, so I started, somehow came up with the idea that we should search data sets, but of course, that, I don't quite mean search in the normal way. So how I started realizing this was, I can search for a data set by going to a website, one of these open data websites, and typing words into a search bar, um, and then getting results back. Uh, and I noticed a couple, Reason a couple ways that this was annoying, inconvenient, like that I didn't like using this to find spreadsheets that were of relevance to whatever analysis I was doing. I'm going to talk about two issues. 
The first issue is that each site has a different search bar. This is the Netherlands website, so I can go to the Netherlands website, but I, wanna, I don't really care, I might not care, I usually don't care whether the data came from the Netherlands or the UK, it's just like I want these data. So there are like a bunch of these sites and I could like individually go to each of them and search for data in all of them. And that takes a while. So maybe it would be cool if like there's just one search that I could do in all of them. Just how like mindlessly people go to Google and type gibberish and get something cool back. Um, so I made something like that. This is a really silly site. Um, all it does is it's called OpenPrism, openprism.com or something.com. You just type in the word and it forwards the search to all the sites, to like 100 sites, and it gives you the results from all the sites. So the first one here is, or, first one here is from New Orleans, the second one is from Gives you the results from all the sites with one search, and that sort of helps with this issue. And it's just using the search API from all the websites. So it's doing whatever search that they have built in. Um, so I said there are two issues with searching spreadsheets that I find. One is that the spreadsheets are on all different sites, and the search feature is only implemented for the one site. Searching Google doesn't index them very well, or whatever, or you have to do something. For whatever reason, people don't, it doesn't, I don't, I don't seem to use Google to search this stuff. And people seem to like this. But the, there was the other issue with searching these spreadsheets. Um, it's that the search search function that, that all these sites implement is just doing a text-based search that doesn't consider that these data files are tables and the tabular structure has meaning. Um, so I started thinking about like how um, coming up with analogy for the way we search with with uh, DuckDuckGo or something. With uh, one of those common internet search engines, you put in some words, and then you press the search bar, um, and then you get a bunch of words back. So I was thinking, if I want to get spreadsheets back, well, CSV files, that I should put in CSV files in my search bar, in my search box, and then get related CSV files back. And then I had to figure out what the relationship would be. Um, getting back to the thing I was saying, uh, this is the same thing, but. Um, so the, the text-based search, this one, we can run it on, on the CSV file and treat the CSV file as text, but there's information in the tabular structure of the file, like, I mean, it's the same thing, but, but uh, CSV file, you know, it's the same CSV file as this one, actually. Um, uh, has um, columns or variables, rows or records, and we can, rather than just treating it as a blob of text and trying to match unrelated words, we can somehow take into account that Columns are variables and rows are records, and each row is a, a thing of some sort. Um, and things, columns have types sometimes. And so I started thinking maybe we can we can try to join spreadsheets. Um, turns out like a join function, if you can join spreadsheets, it tells you something about the spreadsheet. They might be the same spreadsheet, and thus they have the same feed. Um, they might be different spreadsheets like this, but they might have overlapping values. One might be a subset of the other. So I was thinking, if you can join two spreadsheets together, maybe they're related. Um, when I say join, do people know what I mean? Raise your hand if you don't. I'll explain it. OK, good. Um, yeah, so these two spreadsheets, maybe we can join them. Maybe they seem to overlap a decent bit. Maybe they're worth looking at. In this case, maybe not, because the second one looks like an identifier column. But yeah. Um, so, as I said earlier, the only thing I've been doing is doing silly things lots of times and relying on computers to do brute force for me. So I just did all the joins. Uh, yeah, all of them. Um, it takes a while. Um, and then I just choose the ones with the best overlap, meaning, like, I think the way I implemented it is if you did an inner join, the one that would result with the most columns. But whatever, I came up with some concept of what the best join was. And then those are like the ones that got returned first. And that's what I'm calling comma search. It's still pretty slow and it doesn't work very well, but like here's a general idea of sort of. Um, uh, but yeah, all I'm doing is trying all the joins, like indexing a bunch of spreadsheets, trying all the possible joins, and.
and coming up with statistics about those joins, and figuring that if you can join these spreadsheets together, maybe there's some relationship. Um, and uh, yeah, so just to summarize everything I just told you, um, all I know how to do with this is I do a silly thing lots of times, and apparently that's interesting because people didn't think to do that before. And I somehow settled on this idea of search, where like people don't know what's in the data sets, so maybe I can help them by making it easier to search them, but our search is designed for words and not for spreadsheets, and also the search for spreadsheets for whatever reason isn't centralized like a lot of web searches are. And so that's what this comma search project is. I'm just really just doing silly join lots of times and trying to find a thing that, that works. And uh, yeah. So what have you found? <laughs> Uh, yeah, what have I found? Now, the annoying thing is, it's still really slow. So, I think the, the, the last time I ran it, okay, I have a lot of time for questions. Um, the last time I ran it, I, I, was, I only ran it on single columns, and it crashed while through. So, like, this is where I'm going, but it doesn't work that well yet. And I think the thing I realized last time was that most of the values were, were like empty cells. So, like, the next thing on my list to do is to account for that and generally like merge the same values together so that the join works better. And maybe I can do some like some way of anyway, I'm just I haven't found anything particularly interesting yet. So the idea the idea is to find find two data sets which mash up together well. Is that the idea? Um, the idea is I want to find two data sets that are related somehow. And 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 getting things that are that are not captured by just a normal text search. Join seems to work, and it's just one simple thing that I can run. Um, I don't expect, I expect that most of the results, if you run a search, uh, let me just say, running a search involves typing in comma and then a CSV file. The command is comma, because, you know, uh, it was short. Um, so it gives you a bunch of CSV files that you could possibly join to it that would overlap very well. They won't all be good matches, but it's, it'll filter down your search for like things that you might not have thought about that you could join, so maybe they're the same thing, or maybe they're related in some way. And my hope is that like this way we can try to get some feel for what's in huge, massive CSV files that someone created, and I don't know who the person is, and nobody does. Yeah. Anyway, question? Are you using, uh, what are you using to index? Are you using something like Elasticsearch? Uh, no, I, I wrote, this is, one of the issues, one of the reasons it's slow is it's all written in Python, and it's like all written in Python without like any C anything. So um, it just opens the CSV file, go through all the things, cache the things, um, and then cache the results somewhere. Um, yeah, does that uh, make sense? Um, yeah, I, I can go on a bit more about the technical details if you're curious. Yes. Yeah? Okay. Um, let's see. We get, I divide it into the, I need to come up with a better word for this, but the index process or the search process. Index is annoying because it, I use it in two meetings, but let's call it the searching, uh, the caching process, not the searching process. So in the cache step, I take the spreadsheet, um, I break it into columns, and um, hash all the values just to make it smaller, because some of the values are going to be really big. And then I take all, um, well, it's a little bit, the sloppy way of doing it that I'll say for now, just so I don't have to explain the optimization, is take all uh, permutations of all different sizes of the all the columns in the spreadsheet. So if you have, um, let's go back just so I can show you what to point at. Like, with the left one, I would look at each column individually, every set of two columns, and the three columns jointly, there'll be seven different um, multi-column indices. And then combine all the hashes for all of them, and then I have the, the values for the hash values for all of those. Hash is just because it's smaller, but we can just think of them as the values. Um, and then I do the same for the other column. And then I have just check the overlap between one and the other. It's, it's the way it works is, is really uh, simple. And then there's there's caching involved, and this is actually 
basically all I'm doing is for, for things that take a long time to run, I'm using pickle to serialize the output. Um, I should switch that. But. I imagine you've worked quite well for things like country names, where one column is a list of country names. Have you tried doing any identification of what the type of thing is in each column? I have. Because that would probably help you to do things like searching for apple the company rather than apple the fruit. You'd be able to tell that that was a column of fruit names and that was a column of company Yeah, I originally had, I, I had a similar, uh, the way I started trying to do this was by looking for unique indices. And, um, wait, actually that's not really that important. I started trying to do this based on column name. And then it just seems simpler in a lot of ways not to deal with that, because then I wouldn't, because the column name doesn't necessarily convey any meaningful information, and then I have to deal with this other layer of things. Uh, you can probably learn something interesting from that. Um, there is a, you remind me of a, a, a related thing I did do that perhaps you will find interesting. Um, This idea of using, looking at unique indices. Can, I, can people in the back seat? Okay. Data table has columns and rows. Each row is a record. So the the row ha it has uh, an observational unit. Like in this bus stops .csv file that you don't see, but I have referenced here. Each um, each row is a, a bus stop for a particular time of day. Uh, let's just pretend it's bus stops to be simpler. So like each row would be a bus stop, or each row could be like a bus stop and the time when the bus arrived or something like that. And I was trying to figure out what that would, um, what, the mean, what the observational unit of an arbitrary CSV file was, and my approach there was just to find all the, all the things that function as unique indices. And, uh, and that's what this snowflake does. Um, it's not a great name. Uh, and I haven't come up with the thing that's like very, very like pristine and, and like gives you the answer exactly. But if you like look at the unique indices of a thing, you can start to figure that sort of thing out. And it's you can also look do it by looking at the whole spreadsheet. But it gets you somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure you have your original quest to search all the data catalogs. Um, there's this project datacatalogs.org that was. That I took some of my list from there. Okay. Yeah. So what's, I mean, is that just a thread that you sort of just left off, or do you think there's still a feature there? Or what, do we, what do we do to solve that problem? Um, okay. You're wondering how, how to search for, all the data catalogs. How do I search for tacos everywhere? This way? Um, I mean, there, I say there are two issues. One is that we only have the data from a few sites, and another is that this way we're searching isn't interesting. So. I guess, yeah, the common search part is about the second thing. As for the first thing about how to get the data from all the different sites, um, I think these data catalogs are way more like built up than they need to be, and they could be much simpler websites, and we could, um, that, that are much easier to crawl and stuff, and the data could be stored better, maybe. Um, and then it's just, somehow all these search engines manage to store um, caches of all websites and like maybe I'm not getting your question properly. Well there's 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 data hub that I know, right? That's the open knowledge maintained centralized place where you know the Canadians and the Germans and everyone puts a copy of their data sets which they might list on their CCAN instances. The other thing is that CCAN is all is all about federation, but how much federation has actually happened? I don't know. Does anyone know? Data catalogs are for the people who don't know. It's just a list of, of data catalogs. Yeah. Data catalog, I don't really know what people mean by it, but to me it's a list of CSV files. Not necessarily CSV files, but like a list of CSV files. Um, and so if we have a list of all the sites that have all the CSV files, we can go to all the sites. CCAN has this thing built in for federation that you can merge them all into the CCAN thing, but um, I think that's generally the right approach, but it doesn't need to be, oh, okay, I'm done. You can talk about it later. <laughs> cool.